Hello, not so long ago I already did an Android uh, players of middle segment overview. It was end of summer, I uh, compared M11, iBuzzer DX220 and KN5, sorry N6 of course, second generation. But since then uh, competition in the middle, uh, seg middle price segment uh, became much hotter because we, we've uh, received uh, I bought for DX160 and uh, Hybe R5. Actually, another competitor, Shanling M6, is on its way through, but I didn't got it yet. And meanwhile, I will do a brief uh, overview of these three models. So basically, it's uh, newest model, so I filtered all the older models like there are Kane N5 Mark II and I5. Uh, Fios uh, X5 Mark III, it's still popular, X7 Mark I and II, uh, what else we've got, Hydis AP200 uh, and some Sony models, what else, uh, Pioneer Onkyo, so basically Pioneer and Onkyo I don't have, uh, maybe Coven released something, I don't have it too, so basically I've got these three models, the most recent ones. Actually, their price is almost similar. Fuse M11 is 450, and this two goes for the 400. There are a lot of uh, similar features between them. All of them features uh, balanced and single-ended output. All of them are powerful. You know, uh, actually speaking about the power, all three are powerful enough to drive vast majority of headphones, especially from balanced output. There are slight difference in power, but in practice you it won't be an, uh, an advantage or disadvantage for anyone, because all the models that could be driven by the portable players, all three will drive. And there are just few models that, that doesn't have... Uh, that require more power than, than this could be pro provide. All three supports quick charge, uh, all are based on Android, so Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, transmission, receiving, they all work as USB digital to analog converters, and so a lot of <laughs> similar features, but there are some differences, of course, otherwise there won't be much sense in doing this review. Also, please don't expect that I will name best one, because best is, you know, subjective preference, because, for example, if you need something small and pocketable, most obviously you will prefer R5. If you need, uh, I don't know, actually this one is small and pocketable, if you like monitoring rep uh, representation, it's, it will be your choice, if you like good screen, for example, it's your choice will be iBuzz and so on. So basically it's my attempt to summarize some thoughts. Uh, it would, I will try to keep it shorter, maybe not as short as possible, but shorter. I already reviewed all three models, so I will add links to the description. If you're interested, if you interested in more detailed uh, description of any of these dubs, please follow the links. And now let's have a closer look. So probably let's move in order of appearance and first one was uh, FIO M11. As you can actually see, in terms of size, it's the biggest one, so DX160 is a bit smaller, but actually I can say that difference is huge. I'm carrying M11 as my daily on the go dub and I'm pretty okay with it, it's, fitting pretty, it's still fitting into my jeans pocket. So it has a bit unusual design, a lot of edges, it's edgy, it's not smooth and round like this too, so it's basically the continue, continuation of uh, Fios X5 Mark III ideas, they decided to utilize it. It has a, a regular 3.5 mm out and two balanced out, so Pentacon and 2.5 mm. And it's the only dub that features two micro SD slots, so it has about 25 gigabytes of free built in memory, but you can expand it with two cards. Actually, it's the last model from few with two cards because they've released the M11 Pro and it has only one micro SD card. So, wheel for volume, navigation buttons, on-off button, and as usual, nice 
good screen so it's more than five inches uh, it's uh, I don't remember exact resolution figures probably it's uh, 1440 by 720 so it's 720p good viewing angles uh, pretty nice resolution looks uh, really attractive has enough brightness even for the bright light bright sun as a firmware here used Hebe music you've probably seen it uh, before this player so I don't see much sense in describing the UI and the firmware because uh, it's moderned up with media library with search with lot of features including gameplay playback replay game and so on there is a pure music mode and Android mode so in Android in Android mode you will have access to the launcher. Here used Android 7.1 7 probably or 7.0 so basically Android 7 without Google Play services so you will have to sideload APKs if you need them. I For me it's not an issue but actually the on, only disadvantage of such approach is that you can uh, install USB Audio Player Pro. Uh, here used the Samsung Exynos 7278 chipset, uh, three gigabytes of uh, ROM, if I remember right. So it's uh, really fast, probably the fastest DAP on the market. Uh, I didn't do N22 tests, but actually it's really fast, zero issues, zero lags. It's uh, pretty good in terms of firmware and actually it's uh, really good in feature wise because it's the foundation that uh, few will use in future many times probably. They already announced M11 Pro and we will see in future M15 and M15 Pro too. And I'm pretty sure that they will be based on the same hardware in terms of operation system. In terms of sound, here used two AK4493 digital tonal converters. It's cheap that few familiar with. They are using it uh, actively and basically they managed to achieve pretty good natural resolving sound focused on the micro detailization with good spatial stage. So basically it's the most resolving and most nitpicking dub for those who need to dig into the tiniest details, who need to get uh, the most uncolored representation. Sometimes it's uh, causing uh, really um, high level of nitpicking, so it requires the best records, otherwise it could uh, sound sometimes dull or uh, actually it's not it's less forgiving than these two so all issues will be more noticeable at the same time you will have a, a really nice absolutely uncolored sound representation for those who like such type of sound next one is the best looking dub in this review well maybe it's a bit subjective but i think that it's definitely the best in terms of design because uh, shape is really nice and everything is built really good this back curved back panel with a glass like uh, finish silver logo nice uh, smooth shapes and one of the best features it's actually almost each uh, each to each display but I'll tell about display a bit later. So it's Ibasu DX uh, 160. Price is $400. It uses uh, newest uh, Cyrus Logic 43198 uh, digital tonal converter, and actually R5 uses two and few other really good dubs. So actually, you know, Cyrus Logic managed to create nice digital tonal converter, cheap. Opus number one S was really nice, and of course Aston Kern Norma, really good dub. Uh, but of course it's more expensive because it's Aston Kern tax. You are paying. So micro SD slot, just one. It also has 32 gigabytes of built-in memory. USB Type C with all features like uh, charging, uh, using a digital tonal converter, and so on and so forth. So. Uh, Work time, actually, I forgot to mention work time for the M11. It's about uh, nine hours from balanced output, uh, at least nine hours, and about 12 hours from single-ended output. So here 
you will have about 10-11 hours from single-ended output and about 7-8 hours from balanced output, sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less, so it depends on load. Three buttons for to control the playback and volume wheel. Here used really good encoder, it rotates freely without any issues, really nice, I like it, it's pleasant to touch and to rotate. Two outputs, uh, regular 3.5 mm and 4.4 as a balanced out. And on-off button, also it works as a screen lock and so on. So, screen is the best of all these three dubs. It's uh, full, uh, full HD resolution, 1080p and it looks really great. So, is it? It's not even the maximum brightness, so here is maximum level of brightness, you ju just take a look at this viewing angles at this resolution. So just few additional minutes I will try to hypnotize you with the screen. And uh, in terms of uh, hardware, here used a pretty old rock chip system on chip and just 2 gigabytes of uh, RAM. So basically it's the slowest one among the, those dubs. You know, in the, my daily usage on my scenarios, I don't see any lags or slowdowns. So, basically, if you listen to music and you, if you just uh, listen to some streaming media, for example, I've got no issues. So, but there are some complaints about the speed. I don't know how, what to do to get them, but for me, it's not an issue. But I must highlight that it's just my user experience. So. Probably some, on some more heavy load it could be an issue. So, what else? So, here used Android 8.1 uh, with special addition allowing all applications to bypass resampler. Also, it supports uh, MQA full, full unfold, even in Tidal. There is no Google Play Store. Actually, M11 doesn't have it too and uh, no Play Store, but you can use QAPK and APK Pure to install applications, or you can sideload apps, or you can install third-party firmware. There is a good firmware modified by user Lurker. It's, it's pretty easy to install, and then you will have uh, Google Play services fully featured, and Play Store, and few additional features. So, as a core of this uh, player's firmware, works uh, Mango Player. It's updated version with new design, really convenient in terms of media library. You can tweak almost anything in the media library, sort order, tabs and all you will need. And another feature that I'd like to highlight, it's a really good working parametric equalizer. It's a uh, good way to tweak the sound. In terms of sound, Actually, it's, you know, it's a good balance of neutrality and at the same time emotions. So it's not as natural and as monitoring as M11, it's adding a bit more emotion, so it's a bit tighter on the lows, it, it highlights low bass tightness a bit, it's adding more emotions on the mid, and uh, it's playing treble a bit more layered, but at the same time with a bit less extension than M11, so it's kind of different presentation, more emotional for those who like highlighted emotions. Stage is a bit smaller than M11, but it's not a big issue, because you know, it's kind of like dub plays about 20% in staging and 80% it's anyway in air monitor, so don't uh, there won't be big difference in practice. Last but not least and smallest but not simplest is uh, Hybe R5. It's the smallest of all these dubs. As you can see it's uh, really pocketable, really really compact, uh, but at the same time it features really high power from both outputs and uh, pretty long battery lifetime. So about 9-10 hours from balanced out uh, and uh, up to 15 hours from single-ended output. It's also made of aluminium with plastic insert on top and bottom, 2.5D glass on the back panel, so be careful with it, better carry it in the case. 
to for the micro SD here used tray like loading system so you will need a paper clip to change the micro SD it has 16 gigabytes of built-in uh, flash but about only about 10 uh, gigabytes will be available because of uh, operation system it uses uh, Snapdragon 425 as system on chip uh, I don't remember 2 GB of RAM or 3, not that important, it's pretty fast anyway. Of course, quick charge, uh, 2 outputs, 4.4mm uh, pentacon and regular 3.5mm. Volume control buttons and here on off button with LED indicator and 3 buttons to navigate the playback. Pretty compact, also uses uh, Cyrus Logic uh, 43198 uh, for the digital tonal conversion. Actually, I will probably tell about all the specs. Screen is only 4 inch, it's more compact, resolution is 1080p by 545 or somewhere here, so a bit different screen aspect. So as you can see, it's maximum brightness, it's bit less bright than for example Ibasso one and Fio one but still pretty okay pretty visible on the bright sun really good resolution uh, viewing angles and so on here you you uh, use Android 8.1 with their ad addition name di direct transport audio it's uh, avoiding resampling for the different Android applications. It also supports MQA, but what is important here, it features uh, full access to Google Play Store, so it has Google Play services. So in this player it's a bit easier to uh, install third-party applications. Heart of this firmware is uh, high beam music, so you probably seen this player many times too. So media library, gay plus playback, nice now playing screen, everything that you can expect from the good player. Only distinguishing feature I'd like to show it's MSEB. If you seen uh, reviews before, then you probably know what is it. But uh, if you didn't, it's equalizer, kind of equalizer. But instead of uh, changing different frequencies, you select an overall sound temperature, warmer, darker, bass extension, bass texture, more fast or more impactful note thickness. Uh, sibilance, softer or crisper and so on, so different uh, types of sound tuning allowing you to tailor the representation closer to your taste. But actually I think it's trans still translating to some equalizer settings, because, but it's just simpler to achieve the desired result. In terms of the sound, you know, it's a step aside for the typical, from the typical high representation, because usually high sound is uh, with recessed treble, and here this player has the best uh, treble in the history of Hybe. It's uh, It has basic layering, normal attacks and decays, pretty good extension. You know, it's a surprising situation, because actually R6 Pro has better treble, but it's recessed, and because of that it's lacking treble. And while this one has a bit simpler treble, it's, uh, it's not hidden, and because of that it's sounding better. Mids and bass are a bit shifted towards warmer side with a bit of added weight, so it's kind of a player for those who like additional more weighty representation and uh, more authority over the whole sonic spectrum. So here they are, all three tabs. Once again I will briefly summarize the sound, sound representation. It's natural, bright, uh, resolving focus on the micro contrast. A bit warmer, with a bit added weight on the mids and bass, uh, focused on the macro detailization, but not highlighting it additionally. This one is somewhere in between, it's balanced, uh, organic and with additional emotions highlighting. So you can, I suppose this video would be a bit help, helpful to you and will help you to choose the proper dubs. Thank you for listening and uh, see you next time.